Hi guys, I'm Alex. I'm a 24-year-old guy who's married to my high school sweetheart, Ariel. Even though we haven't had kids yet, Ariel stays at home and I go to work. Sounds blissful, right? Wrong. You see, my once cute and loving wife is now a total grumpy control freak. Don't get me wrong, I still love her very much, but, well, who am I kidding? I'm just the henpecked husband who never dares to oppose her. No longer am I a free man. Instead, she insists that I follow her rules, and I swear she makes most of them up as she goes along. No going out with friends. No overnight trips away, even if they're work-related. Dinner is not allowed outside unless I take her with me. No talking to work colleagues on social media. I'm not even allowed to fall asleep first, else she wakes me up by yelling at me. If I dare to break those rules, then I have to face the consequences, and trust me, they weren't worth thinking about. For instance, I once stayed a little late at work, so the next day she made me moldy sandwiches. I didn't notice until I'd taken a big bite out of it. Ugh, gross! Another time I visited my parents after work without her. So she turned my white shirts pink. I had to go to work resembling the Pink Panther. And every day I come home from work to her endless complaints. She could moan on about the most ridiculous things, such as the puddle outside of our house meant she couldn't go for a walk as she didn't want to ruin her shoes. And she'd accidentally drunk normal coffee instead of decaf. And now she had a headache. And it went on and on. Also, she's a real stalker. Yep, it seems all she does all day is spy on our neighbors. Did you know that the neighbor to the right of us walks around his yard in his wife's pink fluffy dressing gown and slippers? And the neighbor opposite sings Christmas tunes to her dog. Ugh, who cares? But if I dare yawn or show any sort of disinterest, she yells at me. So I feigned interest by saying things like, Oh, is that so? Oh, right. Please go on. The nagging didn't stop when I was at work either. As she constantly texted me telling me to come home early to fix the light bulb, faucet, or whatever else she'd managed to break. Jeez, why were there so many broken things lately? Why was she deliberately ruining them so that I would rush home after work to fix them? Nah, that couldn't be possible, right? One time during work, she messaged me saying the washing machine was leaking everywhere and asked me to call a mechanic. I didn't understand why she couldn't call one herself as I was at work. Anyway, I forgot to do it, so she called my work number and demanded I go home immediately. The problem was that my work colleague answered the phone. The poor lad actually had to hold the phone away from him as she was shrieking so loudly. You broke it, so come home and fix it immediately. I grabbed the phone off my colleague and replied, Huh? How is it my fault? She replied, duh, because you wear three outfits in a day and I only wear one, so you broke it, not me, so come and fix it. Uh, yeah. I failed to see the logic in her argument. I just didn't know who she was anymore. Where had the lovely Ariel from the old days gone? Oh, how I longed to be single again. Then, when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. My workplace was celebrating its 10th anniversary, so my boss held a party and invited everyone in their families. Oh, no. The last thing I needed was my controlling wife embarrassing me. But Ariel checked my emails and found out about the party. She immediately repeated her rule. Dinner is not allowed outside unless you take me with you. I forced a smile and acted excited to have her joining me. Hope nothing happens, though. We'd been at the party all of five minutes, and I was politely smiling at my female colleague. When Ariel turned red with anger, then spilled her wine over this woman's dress, said, Oops, then walked off. I passed my colleague some napkins and apologized. Why was Ariel so childish? I didn't want to lose my job because of her jealous rages. Then I found her talking to my boss. She was actually shouting at him for making me work overtime too often. What? My boss was fuming. Now I was sure I would end up being fired. But thank God, through some miracle and a lot of groveling to my boss, I didn't lose my job. I was feeling so down about it all. So on one of my lunch breaks, I called my friend Matthew. I've known him for years. In fact, back in our school days, he had a huge crush on Ariel. And we both tried to win her heart. Anyway, that's in the past. I needed to vent, so I said to him, Back at school, you and I both frantically chased Ariel. We even fought for her. Back then I thought I'd won, but now I think you're the one who had the lucky escape. Matthew replied, Do you know why your married life is so stuffy? It's because she loves you too much. If you need more freedom, it's so easy. You just need to make your wife love you less. Don't worry, I'm here to help. At this point, I was pretty much willing to try anything. Besides, he was my friend, so he had my back, right? So the plan was to find Ariel a demanding job in another town. Then I'd only have to see her on weekends. 
So I asked my old friend to let Ariel work as a newscaster on his about-to-be-bankrupt radio station. Ariel was so excited when she got the job offer. She begged me to quit my job and to go with her, but I disagreed. I made excuses that my job was too good to quit and encouraged her that it was a good opportunity for her and that I would visit her on weekends. After that, the life I always longed for arrived. It was so blissful coming home from work and not having her nag me. I could put my feet on the couch, fall asleep whenever I wanted, and go out for dinner with my colleagues without having to take her along with me. But the house was quiet. Too quiet. Yes, it wasn't long before I found myself pining for her like a puppy. I even slept clutching one of her sweaters. Then it suddenly all made sense. Ariel had only acted that way because she was bored and lonely stuck at home all day. She longed to have me to talk to, and yet all I did was make fun of her. Ugh, I was a terrible husband. I'd been a foolish idiot, and I wanted my wife back, so, without delay, I bought the biggest bunch of flowers I could find and drove to Ariel's place in the other city. But when I pulled up outside, I saw her standing outside talking to someone. It was Matthew. That sneaky, conniving snake. Then I saw him take her hand. I stormed up to him and punched him in the face. Ariel panicked. Alex, are you crazy? What the hell are you doing? Then she checked Matthew's bleeding nose. I was furious, so I blurted out, He's a liar. He told me to send you away just so he could worm his way into your life. She looked at me in surprise and stammered, What? You sent me away? I earned this job and I chose this life. No, I shook my head. I set it all up. I'm sorry, I'm a fool. I was about to hug Ariel, but she pushed me away and said, Are you bored with me? Why don't you... You're a coward. After that, Ariel ran into her house and locked the door. I begged her to hear me out, but she ignored me. I had no choice to drive home sad and alone. I went back to her house each day and tried apologizing, but she never answered the door. Each day, I left her a gift on her doorstep, such as chocolate cake, penguin plushie as they're her favorite animal, and a picture of us together. She took the gifts, but she still wouldn't answer the door. But then one night, when I was waiting in front of her house, I saw her running towards me. Could it be that she'd forgiven me and was coming to embrace me? Nah. A bandit was chasing after her and was trying to grab her handbag. I rushed forward and tackled this bandit to the ground. She was so relieved I was there to save the day, and she flung her arms around me. After that, she forgave me and moved back home. I definitely learned my lesson now. I should always appreciate the happiness I have instead of taking it for granted. But I guess I will still have to live on the edge for the rest of my life. Afraid that someday Ariel will find out the big secret I'm keeping. Yeah, I'm the one who hired that bandit. Surprise! Those secrets will have to come to me to the grave. Or Ariel will bury me six feet under by herself. I don't know anymore. (laughs) Wish me luck, guys.